Welcome back to Project 128. Today we're going to be discussing some pH meters. Uh, we're going to be showing you through our PowerPoint presentation some of the meters that we've used in the past. Um, I have a background with environmental health and safety as a hazardous materials um, specialist and have dealt with um, hazardous materials and hazardous waste as well as working for over 22 years with Southern California's uh, largest water agency. Uh, where I had to deal with wastewater as well as water quality issues and so used a lot of different pH meters there as well as lab meters. We're just going to be showing some of the field meters that were used and again just use the PowerPoint presentation to show you some of the pictures and then we have a meter here that we're going to show you it's with HM Digital it's the one that we currently have and are using with our um, aeroponics and hydroponic systems and so we're going to go ahead and discuss those now. The first thing we want to show you is this is actually uh, from XTech and this is one of their higher end meters. This meter has a probe that you can actually, it uh, can be disconnected and it can be dropped down. Uh, I'll show you a picture of how that type of thing is used here in a second. But this is, uh, again, like I said, a real high end uh, pH and temperature meter. This retails for about $300. So for our needs with the hydroponics and um, aeroponics, aquaponics systems, it's a little bit uh, much for that. Um, this is a picture of um, the, the Hawk system, and that's H-A-C-H, -H, and this is about a $1,000 system here. Uh, one of the things with these systems, uh, I used this a lot when I was in the hazard material field. really liked the Pro because you could actually extend it. It had a cable on it, and you could extend it down 10 to 12 feet, and so you could drop it into a tank or into a voided area, and you could test the pH of liquids that were there. If you see on the keyboard here, you have pH, TDS, connectivity, salinity. Um, it's multifunction. Um, unfortunately, the one thing I didn't like about the, the meter was if you didn't pay for all the functions, the keys were still there, but the functions weren't available to you. Um, so it could be confusing to somebody that uh, you know got the meter and they saw TDS there and they just assumed it was available and it actually wasn't. It's the same meter, you just pay for the options and it again increases the price. Um, the meter with all the options would probably run you close to $2,000. And this is showing um, an example of how somebody would use the probe to extend it down into water. And again, for most of our uses, uh, we're dealing with something that's right there within our grasp and uh, you know, we can maybe just bend over and put it into our reservoir or into our system. And we really don't need something that's, you know, 10 feet long to drop a probe down to test our pH. But this is showing an example in a wastewater treatment facility, um, how we would use that in the environmental field. And this is a, what they call pocket pro. This is from Hawk. And this is a system um, that's used in the field a lot. Uh, one problem with this system is it is not uh, waterproof. It's called water resistant, but not waterproof. If you drop it in the water, it's dead. Um, one thing I do like about this unit is it's actually powered off of AAA batteries, so you can pop open the back and swap out batteries real easy with. Um, one thing I don't like is with the tip, it's pretty much exposed and it's real easy to crack or to scratch. And once you do that, uh, this tip isn't replaceable, and so um, the system would just be thrown away. And this would retail for about $100. I think on Hawk's site, they say it's recommended at 110 to 120, but you can find them on Amazon and other things for around $100, sometimes a little bit cheaper if they're on sale. It is a real good meter, but um, again, it has some limitations. This is the XTEC model. This is going to be similar to the model we're going to be showing you from HM Digital. One thing I found with HM Digital is they are actually an OEM. It's made out of Korea, and they actually, um, I don't know for sure, but it looks exactly like this meter. And uh, they're, they're actually making, HM Digital makes a lot of these meters for other companies. And then they just slap their label on it. And, uh, but it's actually the same meter um, inside. And this is called the XTech PH100. And this retails for about $105. There is also the XTech 400. Um, and uh, that one's um, the newer model. And that retails, same area, about $100 to $110. And this right here is an HM Digital. Um, this is they sometimes referred to as like a pH pen. And um, uh, again, with this, it's water resistant. Um, so if you're, you have moisture on your hands or moisture in the area, it's fine. But it is not waterproof. So if you drop it in, and I've seen that happen a lot um, in the field, people drop a meter into uh, 
the water into the reservoir they're using and this thing at that point is no longer good. It would uh, fry it in the water. So now we're going to go ahead and move on and we're going to show you the HM Digital. It's the PH200 meter and it's currently the meter that we're using. And we chose this again. This is actually waterproof. So if you drop it in the water, it actually floats. Uh, we like the lanyard that it comes with and you can actually remove the lanyard and keep that around your neck, put it back on and off. Um, and again, it's real easy to use, real easy to calibrate. You can calibrate with pH solutions of 4, 7, and 10 with this unit. It can be calibrated automatically uh, with an automatic sensing function, or it can be calibrated manually where you actually tell it what it should be reading when you're putting in the solution. Uh, when you're going to calibrate a unit like this, you usually calibrate with uh, whatever it is that you, the value that you're going to be working with. If you're working with an acid, you would um, go ahead and calibrate down at the four range. If you're working in our case with something that's close to neutral, um, we're uh, pHing and we want our water in our aeroponic systems running at about a six. So we um, we calibrate with a seven. And if you're doing something higher, um, something more on the basic side, you would calibrate with the ten. And we're going to show you what we have is um, I bought the standard reference solution. With these units usually comes a small pack just um, of a small solution and that you would mix it up. It's a little powder. Uh, the one thing I don't like about those is if the pH of your water is way off from seven, like if I were to get it directly from my well, it's up above seven, it's about seven and a half. Um, you could actually not really know how accurate that is. With this solution, this solution is set up and it's you know made for the calibration. And this is actually from General Hydroponics. And um, again, it's a pH seven solution. And that's what we're gonna be calibrating with today. We'll show you how we're gonna do this. And with this meter, again, there's just a on off button, a temperature uh, calibrate button and a hold function. And again, this is a pH and temperature readings. We get both of those. And what I like about temperature reading is pH actually uh, on a meter like this, um, temperature can affect the pH. And so by having the temperature as part of this probe, it would go ahead and um, it um, adjusts your pH value according to your temperature. Okay, I already go, went ahead and poured this in. This is just like a little uh, medicine cup and just poured a little bit in there. What we wanna do is we go ahead and we hold the calibrate button until it shows up on the screen and it'll start flashing cal and we have that in our solution we just stick it in our solution and it's going to sit there and it's going to flash for probably about five to ten seconds um, with the cal and then it's reading 7.00 right now and then it starts flashing end and when it starts flashing end there you go we went ahead and calibrated it to our 7.00 and just going to show you here this is just some some wire from um, tap here. This water is actually going through a softener and filtration system. And so we're just going to go ahead and we're going to put it in here and we're just going to check the pH of this. Sometimes with the pH meter too, what you want to do when you put it in, you want to just stir it around lightly. You don't want to tap it or bang it because you can mess up the probes on the end. And there we go. This water should be somewhere in this uh, six and a quarter to six and a half range. And right now we're reading about 6.36. So that's about what we normally get on this. You know, what I liked about this meter, it's waterproof, it floats. Um, there is a little bit more of a protection around your sensors. And so, you know, if you were to stick it in and bang it, it's actually protected a bit. Um, if you drop it down, when you store this, you want to actually have a little bit of liquid in the bottom because if these um, your sensor cell dries out, it'll actually start getting like a crystallization on it. So you either want to use like a DI, deionized water, which is at a pH of 7. Um, you want to use that. Or what I do is, is after I'm done tech calibrating, I take a little bit of the solution and pour it in the bottom and just keep the, there's a little pad in there. We keep that moist and that'll keep your the um, probe and the sensors good and clean and moist for you. If you need to ever clean it, again, just um, best thing to do is, is use the uh, 7.0 water deionized, deion can't even say it, deionized -de water, or, you know, it's clean water and just rinse it off. The other thing I like about this unit is you can actually just unscrew this and you can buy a replacement sensor head for it. It does have batteries, you take off the top, but they're basically um, like the little batteries that you have in your watch or something like that, they're the small um, batteries.
but there's three of those and they are replaceable. It's just not as readily uh, replaceable as like AAA or AA batteries. But um, again, uh, if you have any questions, go ahead and feel free to shoot us some comments, use our email. We'll go ahead and we'll stick the different things we showed you here. We'll put uh, links for Amazon and um, other places where we know they're for sale. If you want to go check them out, take a look for yourself. And again, we appreciate you tuning back in. And next time we're going to be showing you the HM Digital's EC meter that we have, uh, TDS meter. And we'll go ahead and we'll take you through that. And we'll take you through the calibration of that also. So take care and happy gardening.